The Minister for Information of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has once again called for the regulation of social media. He said it would be in the best interest of the citizenry of the country to monitor the platform's content. Uh, the ministers who spoke against the backdrop of the controversy surrounding the ban of the use of Twitter in the country encouraged lawmakers to grant full regulatory powers to the government over internet broadcasting and all online media outfits. Well, joining us to discuss this is Adura Tomi Bolade. He is a media consultant. And Abiod, okay, well, we also have joining us um, MC Ave. He is an actor and a comedian. And we have former DJ of the NBC, Emeka Mba. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank All you right. for having us. So I'm going to start with the need for regulation because this is. The emphasis that many have debated on, uh, plus uh, the plus, the negatives of, you know, social media. We all know it, that, you know, we see all kinds of things happening on social media, bullying, propaganda, fake news. It's a lot of things going on. But then the government is saying that they need to regulate it. There's a need. And they're saying it's in the best interest of the citizenry. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Tommy, because... <laughs> Uh, you have been a boss in a media house and you have had your fair share with the NBC and, of course, regulating contents that media house, houses put out. But when you first heard about the ban on Twitter, I saw that you had a lot to say. How did this make you feel about press freedom and, of course, freedom of expression as it is in the Nigerian space? Oh, I, I think that um, um, when, the, when the ban was announced, I, I called it what it um, which is media support. As a citizen, you are guaranteed the right to communicate as freely as you want. Um, I would say responsibly, um, that is. Um, so when the government tries to take that away from you, it's an overreach. I think what the government has done in banning Twitter particularly is going um, over its remit. The government might have some concerns about how Twitter is being used. Um, the government can even have some concern about um, the, um, the owners of Twitter. But to ban Twitter outrightly, to prevent Nigerians, to take away that right from them to be able to communicate in whatever platform they wish um, is beyond as that I think the government should be exercising as a democratic nation. And it's important to emphasize that as a democratic nation, the last thing you want to do is to kill off conversation, to kill off the opportunity for citizens to be able to communicate with one another, to be able to dialogue, to be able to communicate with government, to be able to express how they feel about what is happening in their country. Whether government likes it or not, whether it is right or wrong, you cannot take away that right from people in a democracy. And I think that's what the government is doing right now with the ban on Twitter, with um, pushing for this regulation of social media. Government is trying to close civic space and prevent the likelihood of people to communicate as they wish. Now, I agree with people who say that, yes, there are some excesses on social media, um, people who push um, hate messages, people who bully others, people who push falsehood. But we already have laws that deal with these things. We have laws that can take care of these things. To ban an entire platform because you have reservations, about how some people are using it. And I might say the minority of people, if we're going to talk about um, Twitter as a whole, Twitter has done a lot of good. There are people who have crowd, um, crowdfunded um, um, medical support on Twitter. People have been found on Twitter. People have got jobs on Twitter. People have businesses on Twitter. So there's a lot of good that social media is doing that this government is killing with fiat because the government doesn't like certain elements of, of social media or of Twitter. And I think that is just crazy. It's, it's synonymous with killing a mosquito with a bazooka. And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. It shouldn't even happen at all in a democracy. Government is always excited to say, oh, this is what China has done and this is what China is doing. But China is not a democratic nation. All of the countries that are known to suppress media and particularly social media around the world are not democracies. Except we're trying to say that Nigeria is moving away from a democratic system of government. This is not something that our government should be pushing, should be passionate about. In the last couple of weeks, this is the only thing that the government has been talking about, and that is sad if you ask me.
Okay, I'll come back to you, to Tommy, because I want to push you further on this issue. But uh, let me go to Mr. Um the, the minister has talked about, you know, the fact that content has to be um, controlled and regulated. And I know that, you know, when it's not on online, I mean, I'm talking about radio and TV stations, it's already controlled, it's already regulated. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the NBC seems to be dancing to the music of the federal government. So if the government sneezes, the NBC catches cold. And of course, that reverberates through the radio and TV stations. Um, but when the, when the minister is talking about the interest of the citizenry, what interest do you think he speaks of? Because I'm wondering, if businesses are suffering as a result of the fact that there's, there's been a ban and um, tech, tech companies who had allocated certain projects are beginning to pull out which is hurting those tech businesses. And don't forget that Lagos is one of the biggest tech hubs in West Africa. What interest do you think the federal government is referring to? I think, um, I think there's a, um, it appears to me, at least um, looking at it from my perspective, that uh, the Honorable Minister is conflating the, the interest of government, of this regime, and with what they consider to be a public interest. Um, that 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 is what it appears to me to to me like on the surface, um, because there's not even been um, a, any deep conversation. Um, I'm not even going to call it a study to say this is what um, this is this is this is our findings around social media with regards to um, how we should regulate it. Um, when I, when I saw the thing put forward by my, my former place of work. Um, calling for people to be licensed. There's no framework. They've not even done a framework. They've not done a needs assessment of how you regulate social media. Um, I mean, look, I've, I've, I, once I described Twitter as, um, as like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, be a palo. It's where people go to have conversations. There's, a, there's no senior, there's no junior. Everybody can have that, can talk and do what, whatever they want to do in a, in, in a space like that. Yes, as Tommy said, there will always be people who will misuse any platform. People misuse the first printing press. People misuse the first broadcast. And things like that will happen. But I think that um, the, it's almost as if the feelings of government um, were hurt. And, and, and then they overreacted in terms of what, how, what they thought they could do to control them, to bring everybody under control. And it's not going to work. It's 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 um, it's unlikely to work, and it's not in the best interest. Again, using the word interest of of Nigeria and uh, of Nigerian citizens, uh, because as you said, people are suffering. Businesses have shuttered. Um, you know, people. It, it's it, it, it's slowly more and more aggressively even shrinking that space that people need to have conversations around. And this is even a government that came to power on 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 social media. Largely, it's uh, because again. A, a typical of most governments, um, whether it be P PDP or APC, you know, I, I was I was a former DG of, of the broadcast, and I was also under pressure, you know, to not to allow uh, the then opposition have space. So this is typically what governments do, and that's why I think that the conversation around the independence of our regulatory agencies must we must pursue it and um, not have them readily under the thumbprint of a, of a minister who is a political person. And I think that's the conversation, and I'm and, and I'm happy that the National Assembly, at least yesterday, was a public hearing on uh, on the MBC bill as well as other agencies. And, and then the the large segment of the people who participated said, "Look, we need the, we need more independence for 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 the MBC." Let well, me, in terms let, of how they license and so on. I'm sorry, yes, to, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to talk over you. <clears throat> let me just quickly look at something that the um, minister pointed to. I, I'm hoping that you can help us get clarity. He, so, he talked about the fact that um, the country's laws must not be subservient uh, to international telecoms uh, union treaties in view of the need to protect certain peculiar situations in the country. And um, the NBA that's the Bar Association, has sued the federal government on this particular issue. In fact, uh, they said that it is unconstitutional. Uh, and and I'm, I'm asking you now, as a former DG, if a government is asking for full regulatory powers over internet broadcasting and all online media houses or outfits, what does that mean um, in essence? Again, does that affect press freedom? Um, 
Tommy has said that yes, it's, you know, it's affecting us. They don't want us to say the things that we say on a normal day. But you are also saying it's shrinking that space. But if a government is outrightly asking for powers over a thing that they were allowed to use before they got into office, are we still in a democracy? I mean, look, um, we are still in a democracy, um, and that's why we're having these conversations. We, you know, and that's why there's been this very hefty pushback against this um, this ban on Twitter and this attempt to further restrict uh, um, the, the social space. We are in a democracy. Democracy is something you have to constantly work for. Um, it's not something you, you get offered on a platter of, you know, you, we just have to, um, you know, all of us, whether as journalists, whether as uh, people in the in public spaces, we all keep, just must keep working for it. Um, I believe that there is a need for regulation, but um, but not not the way that we're going around it. Um, for example, again, let me refer back to that um, thing that was published by the uh, by the NBC a couple of the last week, in fact, saying you must um, people WhatsApp, Facebook, and all social media, all online. There's no definition, as I said. There's no framework. They've not even defined what the, what, what kind of OTT they want to regulate. Um, is it and because there are different forms of OTT? There's uh, you know there's a, there's a, there's a content side, there's information side, and then there's there's a, there's a communication side of OTT. There's even banking. For example, your banking app. You know if you use PayPal, for example, it's it's OTT. If you have Netflix, it's it's, it's some form of OTT. Your WhatsApp, your Facebook, um, and so so many things. I mean that's the world we live in today. So how do you begin to do that? And how do you bring all of that into the existing laws of the NBC? Even defining what broadcasting is. Would you say that Twitter is a broadcaster? Um, would you say that Facebook is a broadcaster? All of Facebook is a, is, is a broadcast business. It might be a media business, but it's certainly not a broadcast business per se. Mm -hmm. So th th there needs to be more, a lot more clarity about it. And it needs to be conversation with all the relevant stakeholders. I think that perhaps the first thing that should have been done will have been to maybe uh, push for some kind of you know, greater consultation within the industry, have different people have a, a, a proper public hearing, um, and let's have conversations with all the experts, all the people, stakeholders con concerned, and let's begin to, uh, from that conversation, look at how best we can go around this. But I, I, I think ultimately, um, um, the way they're going around it, uh, going about it, will not work. And okay. I, I think we would do more harm to us as a, as a, as a country, but economically, and um, and even with, for our democracy ourselves, it, it, it's it's going to hurt our democracy. But I think that the pushback is, is commendable, and I think that that's that's the best thing we can do at this point. Let me come to MC Abbey. MC Abbey, you are a comedian, you're an actor. Um, you use social media very very often. I see that. Um, and just like I asked Tommy, um, what was your reaction to the Twitter ban? A, a couple of people, you know, still are on the side of the you know the presidency. They're saying that oh, well, you know, we've misused our um, freedom on social media and we're um, pushing, you know, um, the federal government to the wall. And so it's okay to, to ban, you know, Twitter uh, or suspend it. But I'm asking you as a creative, as someone who uses that space more often, how has this hurt you, if it has in any way? Uh, let us know. All right. Um, uh, greetings to everyone. Um, greetings to Mumba. Um, I can see. Thank you so much. And your words are very, 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 very exact. Uh, it hits the nail at, at the head. And thanks uh, so much, uh, uh, Mr. Tommy. Um, yes, it's affected every one of us um, uh, as Nigerians. Uh, personally, it affected me. And um, hearing the news, I I felt that we have a government that is um ill-informed and um based on lack of information global information they, they react instead of act um, a government that don't seem to um count the costs before they throw in uh, their weight on stuff and look at what uncle uncle Mbago said um there are different kinds of ott's um not all uh, broadcasting platforms are, they are all media platforms, not all media platforms are broadcasting platforms. There are different specificities for all these things. But when you come out and you just make a, a, a big statement, a, a wide range statement uh, that covers everything, 
it, it goes to show that you also you are limited in your information. That's number one. And number two, what got me really sad is the fact that you you, you made a debated pronunciation without a law backing it. There is no legal ground for whatever that was said, for whatever injunction that was given. It's just that you're it, it, it's just a reaction of sentiment. But MC, I mean, the president has you, always, you, you, the president has been quoted to say, in fact, we have those videos. I'm sure lots of people would go on social media and post it right now. Uh, the president has said that national interest super supersedes the rule of law. So whether it's constitutional or not, again, he did it in the interest of the nation. That Twitter ban um, was not necessarily constitutional, but the president has said that the rule of law can take a backseat when the issues of national interest come up. What is national interest? that um, uh, uh, a media, a social media platform that has their own rules and regulations before you join, you, that you violate Oh, I'm so sorry, MC Abbey. I'm going to go to Tommy. Tommy, um, let's talk about the, um, the fact that um, the PDP governors uh, were accused by the presidency uh, to be using twitter to spread fake news now this is one of the newest reasons that the presidency has given us for shutting down twitter um, what are your thoughts on this because you have said that you know this is this is um the government getting you know more like an ego an ego trip but the the presidency has come out to say the opposition is using social media for propaganda they're using it to spread fake news hence the reason why they're shutting it down but then we have WhatsApp, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Why is it just Twitter? So I think the government is just clutching at straws. Um, the, the PDP governor's um, forum, um, they are right to oppose this because it's a, um, wrong, it's a wrong directive, it's a wrong action that shouldn't have been taken to start with. Um, so we must commend them for standing um, firm against this. Um, but to say that um, the PDP, uh, the, one of the reasons why Twitter was, was banned is because the PDP has been using it for, uh, to spread fake news is, is also one of those lame excuses that really doesn't travel far. Again, if there is any aspect of Nigerian law that has been breached by anybody representing any organization, um, be it a political party or, or otherwise, government should do what is the responsible thing to do, which is to apply the laws of the land. Um, let's thrash it out in court. Let people be prosecuted. Let them be found guilty or be cleared. So that way to serve as an example to other people. But where government just throws around, it's almost like the government, government is saying that because we are helpless, we are going to take these drastic actions. The government is not helpless. In the case of Twitter, government, government went overboard by banning Twitter. And we should just say the way it is. Government went overboard. If government has any browse whatsoever with certain individuals or, or the platform itself, government should use legal means to resolve it and not do an outright ban. So this, um, I think it was Gary Bashir that spoke on behalf of the presidency, um, this pushback, this excuse that um, the PDP governor's forum or PDP as a party um, was using Twitter um, to spread fake news. It's just, it's lame. It doesn't travel far as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I think that the government should stop um, um, saying things that really put them, that, and make them look quite unintelligent, in my opinion. They should stop saying that. And, and just do what is, what is right and, and appropriate. We are a democracy. And if you want to continue to bring draconian um, policies um, to a democracy, expect that people are going to resist. People are going to resist, and it's in our nature. We've, we, we've pushed back against military government. And these are people who are not, who are not um, um, Democrats. We've pushed back against them. So if someone or a, a government um, that is supposed to be a, a democratically elected government is acting um, otherwise, expect that people are going to resist and people are going to insist that the, the right thing be done for the sake of the country. All right. Quickly, in one sentence, Ms. Demba, I want to ask you this. I did ask my guest on the, on the first segment, we know the body language of this government, uh, especially Mr. President, if he takes a stand, that's where he stands. He doesn't really move grounds. Do you see this ban being lifted anytime soon? Again, don't forget that the government has said that these uh, companies, these social media platforms need to start 
um, you know, registering their businesses in Nigeria. Do you see that happening or are we going to be in some form of a deadlock anytime, maybe sometime in the future? Or is the government going to maybe shift ground sometime soon? Oh dear, I'm so, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, MC Abe, actor, comedian, Mekamba, former DG of the NBC and Adura Tomi Balade, uh, a media consultant. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation, even though the internet did not let us have the best of conversations, but I thank you all for being part of this. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we will be uh, talking about my take. Stay with us. So here's my take. The presidency audaciously insisting that Loretta Onochi is made INEC commissioner. Lai Mohammed, our minister for information, arrogantly continuing the narrative that the government has the right to censor freedom of speech and expression by banning social media. Why are we now all up in arms? This is the Nigeria you and I have system systematically built over decades. The day we started making it okay to buy our way through life, throw the values uh, passed down to us out of the window, make excuses for doing the wrong thing, tell white lies that morphed into bigger lies that became common practice. The day morals stopped meaning anything, the bribe, the brown envelope, the first door, uh, business class tickets, the Birkin bag, the Philippe paper tech watch, Rolls Royce and exorbitant lifestyle, we didn't honestly work for. Everything comes at a price, you know that, and now we're paying the piper and complaining. Why isn't this what we wanted? I mean, now that we have seen how bad things can get, we can actually decide that we want to change the narrative, we want to take back our country. But it wouldn't be easy, it wouldn't be pretty or fun, and it will require a major sacrifice. So the question is, are we ready to sacrifice? because it's time to put the nation first and our personal needs last. Because if we do not wake up from our slumber, the presidency will continue sending us further down into this abyss of national decline by turning our nation into an authoritarian regime, which will eventually lead us into anarchy. So we the people are the members of the government in one shape, form or the other, and we did this to us, but we can undo this. It wouldn't be easy, but we must understand that we are in a fight for our lives, the lives of our children, so that we do not have a choice. We must fight or we die in the gutters that we built for ourselves. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.